The city of Belém is everything that Rio de Janeiro is not. This is not the Brazil of sweet samba. Belém is in the northeast, a tougher part of the country, a port. There is a price for everything here. Especially for the beautiful strange creatures of the Amazon jungle. After drugs and weapons, animal trafficking is big business here. This is the food of a macaco, a taranta. Every year, thousands of Brazil's animals begin their journey to the United States and Europe from ports like this one. Interpol claim this illegal trade is worth up to 20 billion dollars a year. I met with an animal trafficker. ¿Y qué, ¿Cuál es el animal que más que más gustan los gringos? Então depende do gosto de cada uma pessoa, entendeu? Não é todo mundo que vem procurando só animal, são vários. Quer um marara, quer um papagaio, quer um macaco. Não, o que eu penso é que é meu trabalho, eu tenho que vender. Meus filhos têm que comer aí. É dessa maneira. For many traffickers like him, trading animals is less morally problematic than selling drugs. But just look at how the animals are treated. Packed like fruit, many of the creatures don't survive the journey to become pets in the US and Europe. Belen lies just where the Amazon River opens out onto the Atlantic Ocean. I was on my way to meet a man who was ready to take me hunting, right in the heart of the Amazon rainforest. Diego, bom dia. Como é que tá? His name is Carlos. He's lived all his life here. He lives in a basic wooden hut with children and grandchildren to feed. And since he was 12, he's been catching creatures to sell. He's very poor. His whole livelihood comes from the rainforest. For him, selling animals is easy money, available right here in his back garden. He's making a noise to call the monkeys. I couldn't hear a thing. But Carlos was certain there was a big monkey nearby. Esse foi um dos grandes. Macaco grande. Paca. We've been walking for three hours in 40 degrees heat. But there was still no big monkey. Carlos seemed depressed. Mas a gente tá nisso para isso, estamos nisso aí para sobrevivência. É a lei do, do, do povo do sítio, é a sobrevivência. E nós vamos encontrar ele. Vamos encontrar ele. Vamos encontrar. We never found that monkey. This is the other face of the animal trade in Belen. Here, in an animal rescue center, they are trying to help this macaw parrot back to some kind of normality. Most of his feathers have dropped out because of stress and infection. The parrot is too frightened to leave his cage. He was rescued just before he was going to be trafficked and is clearly terrified of human beings. Veio um animal bem magro, tá? Nós vemos pela quilha do peito aqui. Ele já tem na perda completa das, das penas deles, pelo corpo, só sobre as penas que, são, que não estão boas na ave. They're not sure here that the parrot will survive. We went on a trip around the sanctuary. It's a bit like a supermarket, full of the lost and found of the animal trafficking trade. 
First, we meet these baby jaguars. Their mother had been killed to enable their capture. Quanto cuesta un un bebé de onza? Cincuenta mil dólares. The adult jaguar had a particular problem. Então ele tem esses hábitos, ele se masturba. Provavelmente ele foi estimulado pelo dono. This abuse of animals shows that there is an even darker side to the animal trafficking world. But the most common creature here is the three-toed sloth, the world's slowest mammal. These animals are very gentle and trusting, and for obvious reasons, they are very easy to catch. They sell on the black market for up to a thousand dollars. Having seen the animals in the rescue center, I decided to go back to Carlos in the Amazon jungle. He is possibly the world's worst hunter. I wondered if he'd had any more luck since I last saw him. You have seen the macacos, no? Só nós. Aquela árvore lá derrubando fruta. Aí eu me bati na cabeça de poxa, olha os macacos aqui. Tinha mais ou menos uns 20 macacos lá. Aí eu consegui só um. The monkey had already been sold in Belém overnight. That's how fast the black market moves here. But today is another day and Carlos has to go hunting again. He was confident that this time we'd be lucky. Once again, the monkeys were playing hide and seek with us. But there was one animal that Carlos could catch, a three-toed sloth. Cortou o galho. Filho. Esse não vende? Vende. É filho. É filho. Filho. Quanto custa? Esse médio é cinquenta. Cinquenta reais. Carlos doesn't waste any time. The baby sloth, clearly bewildered, is tied up just like a prisoner. Within seconds, Carlos is on the move again. He spotted another trophy. Mas ele é tranquilo. Não, não, não. É pouco pegar, ó. Não, não, graças. Aqui, ó. Não, não, não. Foi a pena. É, olha. <risos> é doce ele. É suavecita. Watching Carlos, I couldn't help wonder how long before the rainforest is stripped of all its little creatures. E muitas pessoas, como um caso gringo, ele chega, um bichinho desse, ele fica louco. Fica louco porque ele vê o bichinho estar tá todo vivo aí, espenegando tudo. Aí ele joga de pergunta quanto é que custa, né? Aí a gente dá o preço de 50 a 100 reais. Aí prontamente eu quero, aí pá, pega o animal, aí puxa o dinheiro, aí vai embora. Carlos is poor. He is at the bottom of the animal trafficking chain. While there are still people in America and Europe 
who are willing to pay thousands of dollars for exotic birds and animals, people like Carlos will continue to go hunting for them.